Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. The time has finally arrived. We're gonna be revisiting one of my uh, favorite deck guides from, I think it was last year, where we went into the Mages archetype for Northern Realms. And, uh, well, with the latest expansion, that archetype has been built up significantly. Uh, not in the least of which because of the patience keyword but there has been a few changes to a lot of existing cards as well that are gonna be benefiting our very brand new spellfire deck it's back baby so spellfire 2.0 we're even making uh, use of the new northern realms pincer maneuver leader ability well not that new but it has been changed quite recently and then we have the current deck list right here with a lot of the new cards included as well so we're going to be going through these cards one by one so we can discuss the interactions between these cards uh, but if you know what these cards do you can of course skip ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below the deck guide is also going to be on the play Gwent website so check out the link in the comment section well in the description down below and uh, upvote that for me please as well because that's going to be uh, helping out immensely but uh, yeah without further ado let's go through each and every single card so at the bottom we have rat of its royal guards twice uh, rat of its royal guards is a simple card that starts at three power for four provisions has formation so meaning that if you put him on the melee row you can use his order ability immediately if you put them on the range row he'll boost himself by one but you won't get zeal and the order ability is boost an allied unit by two but if this card is also boosted you also add two points of armor to the unit that you're targeting so simple good starting option uh, in a round and just allows you to boost the next card that you're gonna play and then we have the new cards one of the new cards already so the ban art student four power for four provisions has patience which means that at the end of every turn your your uh, order ability will become stronger if you haven't used it yet and that order ability in this case is if you put him on the melee row you damage an enemy unit by zero and of course at the end of every turn that will increase so after one turn it will be one damage after nine turns this will be nine damage we will be using this card as a sort of passive engine letting its value go up and up and up and up most of the time we won't be even using this in the first place but then we'll be able to resurrect this card and we'll be getting uh, all of that back so very very cool card on top of that there's also a few cards that actually reset order abilities uh, and we can do that with this card as well just to gain those uh, massive damage points back and the Aratusa Adept has been changed because Charges has been nerfed quite significantly uh, in favor of cooldowns. But uh, Aratusa Adept is now completely unrelated to that because she has been changed to more factor into the Patience keyword. So 4 power for 4 provisions and whenever an allied unit's Patience is triggered, she boosts herself by 1. So as long as there is, for example, a Banard student on the board, she will boost herself by 1 at the end of every turn. Then we have the Megascope, also a new neutral card, which is an artifact that on deploy you pick a bronze allied unit and after two turns, so at the end of your next turn, it will spawn a base copy of that unit that you've selected to the right of it. Uh, basically it allows you to get another spell weaver on the board. Um, or of course another Banard student depending on what you want to do just to give us the engine overload that we're looking for. Then teleportation is a spell that resets an allied unit's power and if it is a bronze unit you also replay it instead. Well you replay it instead but of course if you replay it you reset its power as well. So replaying basically means you put it into your hand so it removes all status effects as well and then you play it again. So you can use it to remove a lock, you can use it just to reset an order ability. Uh, there's plenty of uses for this card on top of that it's also a spell and that's going to factor into one of the other cards in a minute and there we have him immediately so the centurion spell weaver is basically the crux of this deck so four power for five provisions and on order you damage a unit by one and you get one charge of this uh, but whenever you uh, play a mage or a spell so that has been changed to also include spells you gain an extra charge there's plenty of cards in this deck that actually uh, play a spell and a mage in one go or even mage spell mage so three times in one row so if you have a few of these on the board that can really really escalate really quickly 
And we have another spell, one of the new spells, the casting contest for five provisions. You boost an allied unit by five. And if it is a bronze unit, you also reset its order ability and give it zeal. So for the Banard student, for example, if they are at five power, you can use that five damage on your opponent's um, units and then use casting contest to boost them by five and reset his order ability for another five damage. So potentially very powerful card with the Banard students. And now we have the new rune word. We have this card twice in our deck as well. It is a spell and you create and play a bronze northern realm mage and give it a shield. Um, there are, I think, four or even five bronze mages, so you're not guaranteed to get what you want, but usually you want to go for spell weavers or Banard students. If that is not an option, you might also go for the Artusa Adept, um, but it depends on your uh, board at the time. We'll be seeing this card a lot in the example matches. Then, of course, we need to be able to purify our engines if needed, so we have Kutkodak that on deploy you purify adjacent units. So six power for six provisions and a double purify if you uh, kind of bait out the locks to have two units right next to each other that are locked, uh, you can actually use Kutkadak very efficiently there. Then the operator, of course, we can't um, exclude the operator here because the operator is very, very cool in that he is a mage himself, starts at five power and on deploy you spawn and summon a base copy of a bronze unit from your hand to this row on each player's side. So for example, if you do this with the spell weaver, you actually get a second charge on the spell weaver because he also triggers on the operator himself because he's a mage, uh, giving you an extra advantage. You should probably do this at a point where you can actually nuke the spell weaver that you've given your opponent because of course your opponent's turn will start and they will be able to use that one damage immediately if they want to. The necromancy, I think it's pretty clear that what we're using necromancy for. Necromancy is a spell that allows you to play a bronze unit from your game graveyard and give it doomed. This could include a Banard student that has been increased to, for example, six damage. Because uh, of course the uh, changes from patients actually stay on the card as long as the match is going on. So even if it's in the graveyard or back into the deck, that damage will stay at that point. And when you put him on the board, again, the Banard student, he will just keep buffing that damage. So potentially that could go over 10. Uh, not that that happens all the time, but it is a possibility. Then we have Idaran of Olivo. So six power for eight provisions. And the first time you spawn a unit each turn on your side of the board, you spawn a one power copy of that unit that you've spawned right next to Idaran. And of course, give it doomed. Uh, we can do this with the spell weavers. Um, particularly if you've used a megascope on a spell weaver. So if you play Idaran after you've used the, the uh, megascope, you get a guaranteed one power copy of the unit that the megascope will spawn. So allowing you to create a very, very quick uh, swarm as long as your opponent can't just easily nuke everything, of course, which is in this meta definitely an option, but it is a cool card to include in the deck. Now we're getting into the stronger cards. Yennefer Conjurer, five power, uh, has zeal for nine provisions and her order ability allows you to damage the highest enemy units on the board by one. So all of them with the highest power by one and she can do this every turn. So uh, very powerful if your opponent has a lot of low power units because you can hit them all at once with this single card. Now we have Donomir of Troy to protect our um, engines of course. Seven power, two armor, a shield and the defender status. So he blocks any damage given on that, uh, that row. So you can definitely use him to protect the Yennefer and a bunch of the spell weavers. Usually gonna go onto the melee row because the Banard students are focused on the melee row but you can Put him where you want, whenever you need him. Then, um, my original version of this deck, it's actually important that I talk about this, um, actually had a shield wall as a leader ability. So allowing you to put two uh, boosts and a shield on whatever unit that you wanted, giving you a little bit more protection. But the card that I was using as a tall removal options at that point was um, Prince Ansys, of course, because you can add a shield to that card and then have him go crazy against your opponent. Uh, to nuke one of the uh, higher power units there. The change to pincer maneuver, because I, I don't use shield wall anymore, um, Geralt Igni was the better option for the same, the same provisions, because with Geralt Igni, of course, we can bypass defenders if we need to. So very good against cloggers at the end of the round. Um, so two power, 10 provisions if you don't know what Geralt Igni does. On deploy he destroys the highest power units on an enemy row with a total of 35 or more power. But of course if you do this on initiative, so if it, this is the first card that you play on the row, uh, on the round, you only need to have 20 points on that enemy row to destroy the highest power unit. 
Uh, this is also the highest power units multiple. So if there are, for example, like five, four power units on the board and that are the uh, on the same row, and those are the highest power units on that row, you destroy all five of them. So um, a very, very powerful card that is pretty flexible against uh, Swarm decks as well if you manage to keep a lot of cards to equal power. Then we have the first card that actually triggers the Spellweavers three times. So Trist Telekinesis, four power for 11 provisions. And on deploy, if you put it on the ranged row, you create and play a bronze special card from either player's starting deck. If you manage to get Runeward with this, then you get um, Trist herself as a mage, Runeward as a spell, and then the mage you play from Runeward is going to trigger the Spellweavers again. So very, very cool uh, interaction between those cards there. And then we have the uh, final, well, the legendary uh, new card for Northern Realms. Gerhard of L starts at 7 power for 11 provisions, has patience and zeal, and his order ability allows you to create and play a 4 provision spell. Usually I want to try to get the provision cost up to 6, so waiting 2 turns before triggering him. Of course you need to be able to protect him to do this. But if you manage to do that, you can play another Rune Word and have the same interaction like you did with Trist Telekinesis. And then of course the poster girl for this deck is Philippa Blind Fury. 1 power for 12 provisions and on deploy you damage an enemy by 4 and then a random enemy by 3, 2 and 1. Giving you 10 damage uh, and 1 power, so a bit less than the provision cost, but of course most of that is damage, so the removal option is really, really nice. An alternative for Philippa would actually be um, Varaxis, because Varaxis would allow you to reset uh, Gerhard, for example, but there are not that many strong order abilities left in this deck. I had some of them in my first uh, draft of this deck, but I've removed quite a few from uh, the deck uh, by then. And then we have one tutor card, so the Amphibious Assault Echo card plays a Northern Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of 9 or less. You can boost it by 1 for each provision under the limit, which is really, really strong indeed. And then our stratagem is the engineering solution to just have one shield option, of course, at the start of the first round you boost an allied unit by four and give it a shield so protecting one of the spell weavers of the or the uh, banard students of course and that pencil maneuver our leader ability will allow you will allow us to have a lot more of a consistent hand so in order you draw a northern realms card of your choice then shuffle a card from your hand back into the deck and spawn a volunteer on your melee row you can do that two times, so basically you can choose whatever card you want from your deck. Usually we're gonna try and do this at the final round, so we can just get the final good cards from our uh, deck. Um, and then get uh, four more points from that, but that's not what this leader ability is about. This leader ability is about consistency, and that's exactly why we'll, we will be using it. And it also gave us a, a bit more provisions to work with. Because as you can see, there's quite a few high-powered units in this deck. So again, you can check out the entire deck at the Play Grant website, the link is in the description down below. But before any of that, let's go into uh, the example matches. And there we go, our first match is against White Frost. That is going to be interesting. That is definitely going to be interesting. So the, uh, a lot of movement options as well, so the Banard students might not be that effective. Uh, we do have a lot of crappy bronzes right now. Uh, Ravid's Royal Guard is technically always a good idea. Uh, Two's adapts are not that useful, unless, of course, if we have two bad art students. Um, let's get rid of one of those, because, okay. And we get Megascope. Not the best first hand. But uh, let's start out strong. Oh, no. No, this is Monsters. We can't forget that Monsters has Predatory Dive. So let's just put Ravid's Royal Guards down and start with that. And then we get Natural Selection, of course. Of course. That is natural selection, but let's put the ban art student down as well. Doesn't really matter at this point. Because uh, he's going to just get his patience up, going up, going up. So one damage every single turn. And we get the ancient foglet and that of course they're going to move the, uh, yeah, the ban art student in one go. It's not that much of a problem actually. Uh, he's not going to gain, does he actually gain patience if he's not on the correct row? Um, I can use the Centurion Spellweaver now first. I'm actually not served a, a certain if the Banard student is now going to go up. I don't... I do think... Yeah, because Patience is a passive ability, so it's not Rolocked. It's only the Order ability that's Rolocked, so he can still go up if he wants to. And then we get the NL Conqueror, and that is good. Very good. I don't think I'm going to use Megascope just yet. Uh, I'm just going to start using Rune Word um, 
Yeah, let's use Rune Word. Put another, in, another Centurion Spellweaver right next to the one that we already had. And then start blasting the Ancient Foglet, because that's the thing that we want to kill. And both of our units now have shields, so the weather effects are going to be neutered just slightly there. And then we get... Yeah, that's not going to do much, is it? Because the dominance isn't going to help out. I'm going to use Tristelekinesis now. Uh, because we have two Spellweavers on the board, so that's potentially six more damage. That would allow us to kill the Ancient Foglet. Uh, and they used all their leader abilities, by the way. Um, their leader ability charges. So, Tristelekinesis. Over here, we don't get... Ooh. We do get Casting Contest, but we don't get Rune Word, which is sad. Uh, so let's use Casting Contest. Um, and I can reset the order ability, but that's not going to change much. Uh, we just get two charges on everything. We can't kill the Ancient Foglet, but we can, of course, kill the uh, Wild Hunt Hound over here. So let's do uh, that, and then just one more tick on the Ancient Foglet. Okay. Um, oh, I could... You know what? I'm going to use this to grab Amphibious Assault. Okay, and the leader ability is going to... Can I, can I still choose what goes? No. Something went, but I'm not entirely sure what just went into the deck. And we get 23, 23. Oh, oh wait. My leader ability was still selected. That's not good. Let's put Amphibious Assault down. And take another... Sentry and Spellweaver? Or Banard Student? Let's grab the Banard Student um, and put him over here. That gives us two more charges on Spellweavers as well. And there they go. Blammo. Then Nagelfars, the two golden cards, and they use Eridin. Eridin only triggers on, yeah, on Dominance. And depends on which row he's gonna target, but it's gonna be equal. No, it's not gonna be equal because the Ancient Foglet is gonna get boosted. Okay, I'm gonna resurrect a Banard student now. Yeah, let's just resurrect that two damage Banard student. Put that over here. Uh, that's gonna be a bit of extra damage. Uh, and now we can kill the Ancient Foglet as well. There we go. The extra damage is going to stay. It's only going to be 3 damage next turn, so we still have the round if we uh, stay alive there. And then we get Wild Hunt Bruiser, okay. Wild Hunt Bruiser on our one Banard student there. It's not the best hand, is it? But our opponent is wasting a lot of gold cards. Um, the Banard student now does 3 damage. 3 damage is not enough to get rid of the dominance, but... We can actually just hit Eridan with that, then use Teleportation to replay the Banard Student, giving us back the 3 damage. And then we can kill Eridan with the Spellweaver charges. There we go. Still good to go, the Patience is still going on those guys as well, not that I'll be able to resurrect them, so it's not that useful at the moment. And then the Bruiser is gonna move that back again. Okay, okay, um... Do I just waste? I'm gonna put down another Megascope. Yeah, let's put down another Megascope. Because um, that's gonna give us four... Uh, four more points at the end of my next turn. So if our opponent wants to waste another card, I only wasted another four... There we go, Nitral down as well. Okay, that's good. It was a bit of reverse bleeding, but I think we're good to pass now. Um, although good good duck. He won't actually be bled that much. So might as well put Kutkodak down as well. Yeah, there we go. And then Noon Raid has the last card as well. Okay, never mind. But the leader ability is gone completely. They wasted a lot of gold cards. Uh, especially the weather-related ones. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm still doing pretty well. We get Operator. But for Operator, of course, we need to have a good target. So let's get... Do we get rid of Operator yet? Yeah, let's do. And let's get rid of Megascope as well. Rumored. Okay. Is our opponent going to push? That would be bad. Oh, damn. Okay. Our opponent is actually pushing. Um, let's put Gerhard down. Now we get Frost, Frost on Gerhard. Uh, what other bronze cards do we still have left? We still have a Spellweaver in the deck as well. But I think I'm going to use Amphibious Assault. To get Donimir down. 
Although Donimir is probably best used somewhere else. Ah, oh, let's use the Aretusa Adept. There we go. Aretusa Adept. Uh, nine points is actually going to give us the round if we want to. Uh, Gerhard, five provisions. Yeah, let's just keep it at that because the, the Aretusa Adept is just going to get boosted. But of course the Frost is going to tick. Oh, they're actually going to go for it. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so now we have a six uh, provision Gerhard. So Gerhard is going to give us rune word, rune word on the um, Banar Tutor. Yes, Banar Tutor on Gerhard of Val. And now we have another rune word over here. And we can use another. Ah, oh, the damn sorcerers actually. Because the damn sorcerers can actually take the shield from the Banar Tutor. So there we go. There we go. Okay. Still have one leader charge, so we can get whatever card that we want. Probably going to be Philippa Eilhart. Um, but cards that we don't want to see are Igni right now, because Igni is going to be wasted. Okay. That's Philippa Eilhart. Okay, I need to get rid of Megascope. Oh, and that's Tony Mir. Operator is useless, but we have either one. Okay. But that means uh, I can get another card... Assuming it doesn't really matter, I can use Donimir now first, but he's pretty hefty. So let's just use Pencil Maneuver, grab the Centurion Spellweaver, and get rid of Idaran in turn of it. So there we go. And uh, now we can play the Centurion Spellweaver over here. And then we get Art Gate. Art Gate is gonna tick down on, yeah, the Spellweaver. So let's put Donimir down on the same row and use that one charge of the Spellweaver at the very least. So there could be still a Bruiser in their hand uh, with Oberon maybe. And then we got Ancient Foglet which is really good actually. Um, I can use Philippa Blind Fury now to I think kill everything. Yeah. Um, so... 4, 3, 2, 1, and then one charge on the Centurion Spellweaver. Okay, so just not everything. Uh, and the next... Oh, we're not going to get hit by Frost anymore, so that doesn't matter. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was it. Really good victory there. And Pincer Maneuver came in really handy to get rid of Idaran there, because Idaran would have been... Although, Idaran was one point more, I guess. Or just equal, because we got another charge from uh, Philippa there, so... Fair enough. And there we have Reckless Flurry. That's a combination you don't see often these days, but Reckless Flurry is still a very powerful deck. Uh, with the discard stratagem, so we'll be uh, dealing with a lot of uh, heavy damage at the beginning of the, the match here. Megascope with Idaran is always nice. So teleportation might be useful. Uh, double Urtus Adept we don't really need. Could use Rat of its Royal Guards to provide a little bit of protection, but I think teleportation might be a waste here. Yeah, let's get rid of teleportation. So first up, Ancrate Raiders with two damage, always a very strong starting card. Let's put Rat of its Royal Guards down, but I'm guessing they're gonna die if we get hit with something like uh, Coral first, which is always a good opening move. I think Reckless Flurry is just very beneficial to start the round. So that's two damage. And then we get hit with Moxie van Dekker. Huh. Okay, fair enough. Let's put down the Banard student. Uh, protect him with Rat of its Royal Guards for six points. And then let's get that patience sticking down. I think we're gonna go full patience in this first round. So Coral now. I think Coral should have been played in the first. Around there, because now most of those discards are gonna go, yeah, so the Rat of its Royal Guards are gone. So that's another two damage. That's a really good starting play. But now, let's use Megascope on the Banard student. And it there. Next up, we're gonna play Idaran, and we get Gutting Slash there. <laughs> okay. But uh, Idaran next. So Idaran is gonna give us another Banard student. Giving us two on the same uh, on the same row there that, that are both going to go into patience, I think. Oh, this, oh, the spawning is at the end of the turn after patience triggers. Okay, actually didn't know about that. We get Reckless Flurried once, which is what I wanted to try and bait out. And then we get two more discards. I'm guessing that's going to be it for us. 
Because yeah, we won't be able to uh, overtake that anymore. We get hit twice again. And yeah, that was really, really... Ooh, we get hit again. Wow. Okay. I think they might have overplayed just a little bit there. Let's just uh, end it there before we get kill killed completely. Yeah, that was a loss, but uh, we still have our good cards. Our opponent did do a lot of discarding, so that's always uh, in their favor. But other than that, look at that. We get Amphibious Assault even. Um... Might get rid of Yaratusa Adept. Casting Contest might come in handy next. Good Kodak definitely gonna come in handy because there might be a rupture in there. A Tirk V. And other than that, this seems like almost a perfect hand. I would even be tempted to get rid of Casting Contest, yeah. Teleportation instead. So our opponent starts with these Fall Blood Totem. I'm actually gonna quickly check if I have something useful here for. Amphibious Assault. I could actually do just Royal, Rat of its Royal Guards. Yeah, let's just do Rat of its Royal Guards. That should be about 8 points, yeah. And 9 because of formation, so they need to double tap if they want to continue. And then I can actually try and focus on Yennefer. Yeah, if they really want to push. So that's two sixes. And after that, yeah, we're gonna have to see. That's three sixes, there we go. That's three sixes. Hmm. Let's do Yennefer Conjurer. Yennefer Conjurer is now going to be eight points. Uh, but I'm going to use our leader ability once to get Philippa in hand and then get rid of teleportation. Yeah, teleportation is going to be useless here. So there we go. That's one point advantage. And we get hit once, and that's going to be enough for the uh, Gutting Slash to hit. Oh yeah, Junot. Junot. Junot of Bellhaven. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I think it's too early. They are really pushing this. I'm going to put down another Banard student just to see what's happening. And we get Avalok there. Avalok is going to go for Biting Frost, so that's only 2 damage. Um, so that means we're going to put Donimir on the board there now. There we go. Let's just keep that patience engine running. Because now the next two frost sticks are going to go onto Donimir. Yeah, it's purified, but that's not going to make that much of a difference here. Um, let's put down a Centrian Spellweaver as well, because we're going to be able to use that to our advantage. I can do two damage if I want to. Uh, might as well do it. Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Now we get Heren Kadoog. Heren Kadoog is going to be a Bear School Witcher on... What exactly? Okay, on the Banard student regardless. Yeah, let's put Gerhard down now. Um, and just start hitting something, I suppose. Doesn't really matter at this point. And I could even use Kutkodak now. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. Although the Purify... We get rupture at the very end, that's gonna hurt, but even though, yeah, let's just purify. Um, and we can use those two points on the Sintrian spell. We use Gerhardt, that's gonna be. Huh. Yeah, you know what? Casting contest on Red of its Royal Guards, you can do that again then. Um, and then the Sintrian spell weaver once. And that's our turn. Okay. Looking pretty good. Our opponents spent most of their gold cards, I think, already. Yeah, because there was Geralt, Avalach, the Totem. This is going to be close. Um, I don't need teleportation. I don't need the Aratusa Adept. Yeah, not the Aratusa Adept. And we get the Centrian Spellweaver. Okay. That's the best that I could hope for. There is going to be one more charge of... Yeah, so I go first. I can use Pincer Maneuver to get a Rune Word out instead of the Casting Contest, because I think that is going to be better. Um, so Casting Contest can go. Uh, and then I just realized I should have put the Centurion Spellweaver in the deck as well. Because the only thing that I can grab now with the Amphibious Assault is going to be the Patience Engine. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to play... Yeah, the Centurion Spellweaver first. And we get the Uncrate Greatsword. It's gonna heal that immediately. Uh, but that gives me the chance to actually play Rune Word first, and we don't get 
what I wanted. Okay, we don't get a Sintrian Spellweaver. But that still gives us three charges here. So let's just ram them into the Greatsword here. Next up, I think I'm going to even use Amphibious Assault now. Since we have a Banard student on the board, might as well get the, uh, the patience going again. Megascope, so that's going to be a 10-point card out of that, because the Greatsword is going to be pulling... Yeah, just going to spawn, so it's not going to damage itself. So there we go, patience on the board. I can keep the Centurion Spell Weaver. Doesn't really matter, I think, at this point. Let's just damage it. There we go. This is looking good. This is looking good. So we get hit on the Centurion Spell Weaver. Uh, we're gonna use Tristelekinesis now. Hopefully Runeward this time. Yes, Runeward on the go. And on Runeward we don't get anything useful. Uh, we do still have the shield on the Banard student. So that's gonna be seven points. So yeah, let's put the damn sorcerers on the board as well. We get three more charges with the Centrian Spellweaver. One, two, three. So that's the Greatsword down. We only have three damage on the Banard student, but I'm gonna keep that alive for one more turn. And then Philippa Alhard is gonna strike. And we get another Witcher. It's probably gonna be another Bear School Witcher. There we go. Hitting the shield, being um, giving them 13 points in one go, but they're going for the Centrian Spellweaver instead. Um, so yeah, uh, this is gonna be... Philippa then, I suppose. Yeah, so Philippa Blind Fury onto... Oh, what? Two, three, four, five. Ah, we just don't have enough for to kill one of those Bear School Witchers now. Uh, but we can do three damage over here. And then hit the shield over here and boost ourselves by two. So that's 15 points ahead. They do get four more points and we get 11 points down. But yeah, there we... Oh, the, the healing was already triggered. Never mind. There we go. One against Reckless Flurry as well. Very, very nice. And there we go. Because of the new cards, um, the new Spellfire deck is just way more powerful than it ever was before. So spamming the boards with Spellweavers and then getting a lot of charges using Rune Words, Tristelekinesis and Gerhard Ovel is just the way to go. As you saw, it just takes down a lot of units, even though uh, it got destroyed in two turns. It still managed to output, I think, about five or six damage which was really good for a 5 position card. Um, but other than that, yeah, this this is the deck. This is the deck. As I said before, you could uh, remove Pincer Maneuver and go with Shield Wall and then shuffle around a bit with the units. I think you might be getting rid of Yennefer Conjurer or something like that to get back down to the provisions that you need. But other than that, Pincer Maneuver just gives you the flexibility, the consistency that you need. You could get Amphibious Assault if you don't get it. You can get Philippa, you can get Gerhardt, all those good stuff. Um, or even Donimir if you really want to. There are a few neutral cards that kind of clash with Pincer Maneuver, but they're just really good options. Um, for replacements, as I said before, you could still go with um, something like Prince Anseus on, uh, instead of Geralt Igni, but Igni is just better to bypass that defender since we don't have a direct purifier. Uh, something that we could also do, but uh, this is the deck that I've, I've just set up. There's a lot of experimentation that you can do with this as a base. Um, so yeah, definitely do that and let me know what uh, improvements you want you would make to this deck. Because uh, yeah, it's it's been one of my all-time favorites with the uh, the way back when the original Spellfire deck. But uh, yeah, this is just so much more powerful now. But with that being said, sadly, we're at the end of the video already. So hope you, hopefully you guys enjoyed this deck guide on the brand new spell fired deck. Because uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying playing with this uh, with this deck. The only problem, of course, is the huge amount of Nilfgaard on ladder right now. Uh, Igni is really good in taking out Colgrim behind the defender, but yeah, other than that, Nilfgaard has such a such a high amount of tempo these days with a huge amount of locks that Kudkodak on his own is not gonna cut it. You're just gonna have to bite through the uh, the bitter apple and uh, try to um, yeah, just just weather the storm of locks and then try to keep Kudkodak for your stronger gold cards like Ger Gerhardt that would be getting locked otherwise. But uh, yeah, Nilfgaard is going to be a tough matchup with this deck. But other than that, the uh, the other archetypes seem to be having quite a bit of difficulty trying to get rid of all the spell weavers that you can generate. Especially if you try to generate a lot more spell weavers with Idaran on the board. I've managed to get up to six already on the board in certain matchups. 
um, then and then you play either a spell or a mage and the entire board just goes haywire because of the amount of charges that you can get. But uh, yeah, as I said, let me know if you have any improvements for this deck as well because I'm really looking forward to talking to you about this deck because uh, yeah, every feedback is really appreciated. And that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. So with that being said, check out the uh, deck link in the description down below and upvote it there as well. And uh, that leaves me with just telling you to thank you enormously for watching and uh, see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge where we'll be doing another very interesting deck guide. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Stay nutty.